Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technology. I'm your host, Orst, and today we are continuing our introduction to Postman series with Postman Runner and Console. Prior to this video, we had looked at collections and requests, workspaces and environments, and lastly, pre-request and test scripts. So let's get started on Postman Console. Postman console is very similar to any other console you would see, like a command line or a terminal, uh, where you get to see outputs. The difference is you don't really put inputs into the console. The console shows you anything from the pre-request uh, test area or the request itself, the output of uh, the execution. So go ahead and load up Postman console. And we'll go ahead and clear this default message. And so to get started, we have the get request here that we've been working with. We're going to go ahead and execute that. However, first I'm going to just comment out this code that I had prior so that we don't see that in the output. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click send. And putting the console back into view, you can see that it logged the get request and its URL. And then in addition, any input or request headers, the response headers, and the response body type. or excuse me, the actual output of the response body. So this can be very convenient when doing uh, any type of uh, debugging. And when you really need to see the output of what's going on, um, just to really validate things are working properly. Here you can see we have a pretty view and a raw view, which makes it really convenient and easy to uh, consume the data. And then we see our uh, status code to the right here, and then the actual time it took to execute. So now we're going to go ahead and clear this out and we're going to try this request again, except we're going to uncomment our pre-request script. So we'll save that and click send again. And what we'll notice is uh, two things here. One, with this get request to postman echo basic auth, that was the actual execution we have here in send request. So even though we sent a request through a script, it still logged it to the console. And as you can see, we get the similar type of results that we would with executing any other request. In addition, I added a extra, extra bit of code in here for console.log response JSON. So what I did in here is I logged the actual response JSON that we get so that you can see another way we can actually log to console where we want to force something to log when we need to see its outputs again for you know debugging and uh, and message purposes. So here you can see the object is authenticated true just as we would see if we looked at the response body here. So that's another way you can do that. And anything you really need to log, you can do that with just console.log. And then lastly, we're going to look at Postman Runner. So this wraps it up for Postman Console. There's nothing much else really that you can do with it, but it really gives you a way to view your data and do uh, debugging. As mentioned in Postman Runner, I did add a bit of code here to Postman test and this Postman set next request as I did in the prior video in pre-request and test scripts, we're going to see the value of this come into Postman Runner. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and click that. So 
So Postman Runner is just a collection runner. It takes a folder or a collection and you can go ahead and run all the requests in it one after the other in, uh, in the order that they're placed. So this allows you to really work through flows that you can uh, set up yourself and order them in the proper order and run them in a, in a sequence and basically execute a test scenario or a test flow. So in, in the type of uh, REST type protocol where you do uh, CRUD type operations, create, read, update, delete, you can go ahead and put a order of a post request, a get request, a put or, or patch request, and then a delete request all in that order uh, in a collection or a folder and then we can run it in here and you basically run through your basic REST operations. So here we're gonna look at the UI real quick before we do some sample executions. Here we get to choose our collection or folder. And so in this case, we only have Postman Echo Collection. We can go ahead and click a folder as well. We'll look at request methods that we've been working with. And then you see they populate here on the right hand side. Below here we have environment. So this is when you need to choose any um, environment variables that your requests rely on. This is where you get to choose what environment that you're running in. Iterations is how many times they run through. So if we set this to two, for example, we would run through each request twice. So once we got to the end, we'd start back at the beginning. The delay is how many, how many milliseconds you want to delay before executing the next request, such as you know, if you need to wait for the server to um, respond, um, depending on the uh, performance of it, you can go ahead and do that delay. Logging responses, as it says, we log uh, the response for all requests, the failed requests, or no requests. The data here is a, a interesting thing we've never seen. So in Postman uh, Collection Runner, we can add a data file. And this data file is a CSV or JSON type file where we can use that for, for variable inputs that change over time. So let's say for example, you're running through a, a multitude of test scenarios or CRUD operations. Let's say I'm, I'm creating different types of data, uh, reading and updating and deleting different types of data. In here, we can set a file uh, with that data, such as a CSV, I'll, I'll use this example. And the column headers in the CSV are the variable names and then the values below it are the iteration values. So for the first iteration, we would do the first row of values in, in that CSV file. The second iteration, we use the second row, the third, the third uh, row and continue on that way. So this is really powerful when you really need to run through multitudes of scenarios and you can go ahead and just run this through real quick and uh, get your results of your uh, runner results of your execution. Same thing works with the Postman uh, uh, JSON files, or excuse me, the JSON data files. So you can upload it that way and go through multi multiple objects or array of values, and it'll work the same exact way. Here we have keep variable values. So let's say we uh, update a value during this process. It'll hold on to that after you close the runner. Last two, we have our run collection with the stored cookies. So if you used uh, cookies beforehand with these methods, I'll go ahead and use those old ones, or in this case, check by default, save the cookies after the run. So when you go back into the normal Postman UI, you'll get to use those. And then we'll go to the right here real quick. We have our run order, which allows us to check off first which ones we want to use. Uh, so let's say I want to skip post raw text. I can go ahead and uncheck that and that'll allow that'll go from get request to post form data. So this is convenient when you have one method that you don't really need to run through your scenario and you can just you know uncheck it to skip it. In addition, you see these uh, the stack here on the left hand side of each request. We can move them around in order to change the order. So even though get request is on the top in our actual uh, collection in the Postman UI, we can go ahead and change that order conveniently in here. So it allows us to keep the same order in our collection, but during our run, change them up just in case if we've ordered them differently than the way they need to be run in a scenario type um, uh, test.
So you can deselect, select all and reset. And basically that's it. The only thing I want to mention is that um, postman.setNextRequest uh, in the test of the get request. What that does is it allows me to skip uh, any request that I have set in that set next request. So it basically jumps to that next one and skips anything in between. So that does it through a, a code way versus using a, a check mark or checkbox way. And in there, you may remember, I've set next request to post form data. So it's going to jump to post form data and skip post raw text. Basically the same thing as if I had unchecked post raw text here. So we're gonna go ahead and run that right now. And as you can see, we did get request and post form data, but we never did post raw text. Here we get to see the output of all of our data. So uh, we could see output of our tests in each of the requests. There are our status code response time and the bytes that were downloaded in that request. Uh, here we have, you could see green for anything that passed or red to anything that failed. And we have some uh, uh, nice colorful um, graphs at the top as well for showing what passed and failed. Here we can just uh, collapse the results into a run summary and see basically just a pass or fail way. And then here we get to export the results. Uh, what's convenient about that is I can uh, save these or share these results with a friend or someone else using Postman and they can import them back to uh, review the results of this execution. So we go ahead and uh, export this and save it and show you an example of uh, loading it. So now if these, this failed, and didn't work the way we expected, we can do a retry or uh, we can do new. So we're going to go ahead and do retry just to show you, hey, it worked the same exact way. And here we can click new as, as well and just run it again. So in this case, we're going to skip another. I'll do skip put request. So I'll go ahead and run it. And you'll notice here we only did get post form, the patch, and the delete because we unchecked the put. And this basically highlights what you can do within uh, the Postman runner. And so lastly, we're going to go ahead and try and import those results that we just looked at. So in order to really do that, we're going to go ahead and clear out of the runner and reload it. All right, as you can see here, we have all of our prior executions in here. But in order to import it, I need to delete it first so that it recognizes it as a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete all, click delete. We'll do import runs. And we should go back to our old Postman file that we saved. Yep, and click open. And we'll see now we have those same results in here. Go ahead and click it and we get to view, review those results just as we had before. And that about uh, wraps it up. I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in on this episode. If you like this content, please give me a, a thumbs up on the video. Uh, if you want to get more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the bell to get notifications on when these new videos come out. In the next video, we're going to look at... Uh, the last video of our introduction series, and that is Postman settings. So we'll look at how to change the UI and how it really can uh, customize Postman to uh, or personalize it to your liking.